In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord's miracle, you heard read in the Gospel reading today, is sometimes called the healing of the deaf mute. Now that's not a wrong title for this miracle per se, but we should at least acknowledge that the text never calls this man a mute. It's what the people res- respond at the very end of the, of the pericope of this passage that we heard in the gospel when they say, he has done all things well, he even opens the ears of the deaf and, uh, and people no longer remain mute. But this man is not called mute. He's rather identified as one who has a speech impediment. And so he spoke with difficulty. We've all known people who are deaf or who suffered from hearing loss later in life. And so we're familiar with the difficulty this poses for them for clear enunciation. Now, a better title for this healing, a more accurate one perhaps, would be the healing of the deaf stammerer. Because the man tried to talk. He made sounds. He just couldn't be understood. He stammered. His tongue didn't behave the way he wanted it to. He tried to speak, but he had an impediment and it made it difficult. And so he was silent. And so he wasn't silent. He wasn't mute. He probably made loud noises in an attempt to get people to understand him. Helen Keller thought deafness was worse than blindness. She said that blindness cuts you off from things, but deafness cuts you off from people. And Ray Charles agreed. He once said that if he lost his hearing and if he became like Helen Keller, that it would be worse for him than death. In 1986, he founded the Robinson Foundation, which provided financial support not for people dealing with vision issues, but for people suffering suffering uh, specifically hearing loss. The foundation exists to this day. It's changed names. It's now the Ray Charles Foundation. But for Ray, the loss of hearing was far worse than the loss of vision. Makes plenty of sense for a musician. Deaf people sometimes make loud groans and sighs, and that can cause people discomfort and cause them to turn away. But deafness and stammering doesn't cause Jesus to turn away. The gospel says that Jesus unstopped this man's ears, that he loosened his tongue or unchained his tongue so that he didn't stammer anymore. He no longer had an impediment and he spoke plainly. Now, all of you were born like this stammering deaf man. You were all born spiritually deaf, unable to articulate your fear, love, and trust in God. But your deafness didn't cut you off from Jesus. For in holy baptism, he opened your ears. He unstopped your ears. He gave you ears to hear. And he loosened your tongue so that you could confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, so that you could offer him your prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. But now, imagine that man. Imagine seeing him. The guy who once couldn't hear, who once couldn't be understood when he spoke. Imagine seeing him out on the street and going up to speak with him. But every time you would go to say something to him, he would cover his ears with his hands. Or every time you expected an answer from him, he would put his hand over his mouth. Every time he attempted to say a word. That he covered his mouth every time he, ex- he intended to speak. And you would think, well, that's weird. Why is he doing that? And he would say to you, I don't want to give you the coronavirus. No, he wouldn't say that. But you would ask him, why are you plugging your ears and covering your mouth? Jesus healed you so that you could speak with clarity, so that you could hear things Clearly, Jesus healed you of your deafness. So why are you now choosing not to hear? Jesus unchained your tongue so that you could speak plainly. And why are you choosing to make yourself impossible to understand? Why are you 
insisting that you go back to what you once were, we'd find that behavior baffling. We wouldn't understand this guy or why he's doing that. Well, that means God must surely be baffled by us, right? Because we're not spiritually deaf, but we've chosen to cover up our ears and our mouth. We're choosing deafness when we tune out God's Word. When we find it inconvenient, we're plugging our ears. We don't want to hear it. Christ has opened our ears, but instead of itching for God's Word, we itch for things like poisonous gossip. We itch for music that doesn't glorify God, but celebrates all manner of licentiousness and evil behavior. Our Lord has loosened our tongues to confess, to pray, to praise to profess our faith in the Most Holy Trinity, but we've returned that favor by speaking words that wound, by hurting those that we love the most, by grumbling about the ones that God has given us to serve, by being ungrateful for the blessings and opportunities He's given us. Jesus has unstopped our ears and freed our tongues, and here we are covering them up. It's baffling. But the Lord always speaks plainly. Always. The law carved in stone. The Ten Commandments, what Paul today in our epistle calls the ministry of death and condemnation, is very plain and it's very easy to understand. And the law is God's plain speech and it judges, it accuses us, it leaves us terrified. Like when Jesus our judge once said these plain words, you will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word that you've ever spoken. Or when like Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. The law speaks plainly. The letter kills. And so let the letter, let the law do its job. Let it kill. Stop making excuses. Stop stammering out excuses. Stop being the victim. Stop blaming other people. Recognize the role that you played. How you contributed to the destruction of your marriage. How you contributed to your children no longer coming to church. How you contributed to your being fired from your job. Repent and speak plainly. Out with the truth. I have despised my Lord. I have trampled His word under my feet. I have sinned with my ears. I have sinned with my tongue. I have taken my Lord's gifts for granted. And I have murdered the one who's been nothing but kind to me. Speak plainly. The law speaks plainly. But take heart, take courage, because the letter kills to be sure, but the Spirit gives life. There is ministry that exceeds the plain speaking law in glory, and that is the ministry of righteousness. That's the ministry of reconciliation, the astonishing ministry of the gospel that saves us from eternal death, gives us life. Let that baffle you. Let that astonish you again and again just the way it astonished the people who witnessed this healing. The people were astonished beyond measure. He has done all things well. He's opened the ears of the deaf and He makes the mute speak. They were astonished. He has done all things well. Literally what they say is He has done all things beautifully. Or even He has done all things excellently. It's the same word, in fact, that they use. He has done all things well. That word for well, it's the same one that God used when He gave the verdict on His word of creation when He said, it is very good. Perhaps it should be translated, it is very beautiful. It is excellent. But man ruined that beauty. Ears that push out His gospel and tongues that can't speak plainly and rightly about God are not beautiful in His sight. 
And so came Jesus to fix what was broken. And so now our judge, the one who sentences us, is the one who redeemed us, who bought us to be our own and has sentenced us righteous. Jesus is your judge, but he is the judge who will save you, not condemn you, because he came to be condemned in your place. And so you have been careless in your hearing. You have been careless with your words. But for your sake, he wasn't careless. He never covered his ears to what the Father said, but he listened intently as the Father communicated his desire to save you. And he responded with, not my will, but yours be done. And he carried it out. And he never covered his mouth so that you couldn't quite make out what he was saying. He always spoke openly. He always spoke plainly, knowing that it would eventually cost him his life because he came to give his life for yours. He has done all things well. He has done all things beautifully. But what he does best, the most beautiful thing that he does is forgive the sins of the undeserving. And he does that by becoming what we are so that we might become what he is. Jesus' hearing was perfect, but for us he became like the deaf man. His His ears heard all of the insults. They heard all of the scorn, all of the accusations, but it was as if he was deaf to them all. And so he focused on getting to the cross and answering for our sins. Jesus is himself the Word. He always spoke plainly and directly, but at the cross, there came an hour when he could no longer speak clearly. He could no longer enunciate the words as he was choking on our transgressions, suffering the wrath of God. And could only cry out with loud groans and sighs as if he were a stammering deaf man, cut off from his people, cut off from his father. He was forsaken by his father so that you and I would never be forsaken. This is the one whom the Holy Spirit lifted from the dead on the third day, leaving behind all of your sins, leaving behind the grave, death, and hell, And that Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is the one who has called you, who has raised you from the dead, who has given you life, who has brought you here this morning to speak plainly to you. Words of comfort, words of absolution, you are are forgiven The Holy Spirit has called you, enlightened you, and today He gathers you in front of the baptismal font with the same plain words that He once spoke to you at your baptisms. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You are named with the most holy trinity. The Holy Spirit gathers you today in front of a sinful man, your pastor, who has been commanded by God to speak plain words to you. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And now that same Holy Spirit gathers you in front of the altar and speaks plain words to you still. Take, eat. This is my body. Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. No hemming and hawing, no stammering, just plain speech that opens up heaven for you, that opens your ears, that opens your mouth to confess and praise Him in this life and to continue praising Him in the life of the world to come. Imagine someone who used his ears and his tongue only and always in a God-pleasing manner and then choosing to die for those who have used it only and always 
in a manner so directly opposite. For the deaf and the stammering, who couldn't confess faith in God or fear of God. Well, you don't have to imagine it because Jesus has done this. And Jesus did it for you. And so be astonished beyond measure. He has done all things well. He has done all things beautifully. He has done all things excellently. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. He makes you hear. And He gives you words to speak. Praises to sing. To Him alone be glory, honor, and dominion now and forever and unto the ages of ages. In Jesus' name.